Hey, welcome back, survivalists. So today we're taking a look at the latest and greatest survival and tactical gear. By doing that, we're doing that by looking at Battle Box Mission 88. So as always, as I'm going through this box, I want you guys to let me know what you think of the gear that we're going uh, to see in this box. I'm actually pretty excited about this box this month. All right, so let's open it up. And as always, I'm going to start off with the Pro Plus or the Knife of the Month box. We we'll start off with the knife that we get this month. I'm gonna work my way back to the pro box and then the the basic box and the advanced box. Show you all that stuff. So the knife of the month this month is the Fox Knives Air Fox. So we got a little bit of a pocket knife, which is pretty nice. We get a lot of these larger full tang knives. But the truth is, I use these little pocket knives a lot more often than I do a big full tang knife. You know, full tang knives are great for camping and emergency kits, but sometimes, man. Something like this, this size is what you're going to use most often. Now, Fox Knives, they actually come from Italy, I believe. They got an entire town, and it's kind of like a manufacturing town out there where the entire town is really focused on this one knife manufacturer. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm already liking it already. This is exactly what I like to see for a pocket knife. Nice and compact. I really like these scales. I like all the textures on them. I like these rivets they have. Got a nice little pocket clip there. And you can see the uh, the grooves for your fingers already look really, really uh, crisp, clean. I like them. And there we go. That's what I like, man. Yeah, nice, simple, simple knife right there. Oh, I like that click, man. It's very clicky as well. All right, so this is the Fox Knife Air Fox. So we got um, the blade is N69 CO stainless steel. The um, ba -ba, stone wash blade, blade length is 2.76 inches. It's actually a little bit of a smaller blade than I'm used to. I'm usually have a, a little bit of a larger blade than that, but 2.76 inches overall length is seven inches. Um, and weight is 3.5 ounces. So that is kind of the first thing I noticed is that that blade length is a little bit smaller. If I look at something like this, this is the uh, CRKT Tanto. And this is kind of, I carried this with me since I was 25 uh, and in the military. You see, it's got a little bit of a large, longer blade. Um, so 2.7 inches is pretty short for a blade, but like it works. It's effective. Like that's all you really need. Like, you don't, there, there's very, you don't really need a longer blade, right? What's the real benefit to a longer blade? There really isn't much. Uh, but yeah, man, that's a really nice, crisp looking pocket knife there. Super, super lightweight. Like I was saying, I like these little grooves that it has here for the fingers, kind of built right into the scales like that. And I really like the texture of the scales. The one thing I really hate when it comes to pocket knives is when there's no texture on the scales whatsoever. You kind of feel your fingers sliding around. Like, you don't have that problem with this knife here. This is definitely uh, very grippy. It's got a really nice grip to it. I got pretty big hands. Um, I think this actually fits pretty well. Sometimes you get these smaller knives and like my pinky finger doesn't know what to do. I don't have that problem here though. Like it's got a small blade to it, but the grip and the handle is big enough for the all four of my fingers, even though the blade is a little, little bit smaller. You know, I've definitely we've got knives here where my pinky doesn't know where to go, but this is a good grip, man. This is a good solid grip there. I think that blade is perfectly fine. Got a nice little drop point to it. And you compare that to something like this, um, which I believe is a Tanto style blade. Let's see if you can see. The difference here between I, I believe it's called a drop point blade like that versus a tanto style blade where it has a much stronger edge it's more of a curved edge i like it a lot man i like it so the fox knives fox knives air fox has that old school feel but the modern materials and the amazing quality you come to expect from fox cult cut cutlery the stone wash stainless steel blade opening all right let me get the zoom in there we go <laughs> Uh, ba -ba -ba, just under three inches long blade, sharp and lock solid. Thumb stud is provided to allow for one-handed opening. So yeah, so this is the uh, thumb lock right here, which I like. All right, that's a typical, pretty common style lock mechanism. And then it's got a thumb stud there, right there. So let's do the one-handed test. It's a little, it's a little stiff. Oh, that's a little stiff actually. That doesn't really flick open super easily. But uh, maybe I just got to put some more oil on there. So it does have that little thumb stud right there. That's what they're talking about. So that I can just flick it open. Man, that that really kind of sticks there, though. 
So luckily, BattleBox has given me some oils in other um, boxes that we re received. But yeah, that definitely is kind of, kind of, it's a little stiff, even kind of closing it, man. It's it's all just a little, now it's a brand new knife. Maybe I got to wear it in a little bit. Oh, man, I can't even do it. Oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, man, it's, uh, I may need to lube it up a little bit, loosen it up, get some, uh, some play in it, work on it a little bit. But overall, dude, I, I really like this. Um, so what do you guys think about this pocket knife? Or what do you guys think in overall about what goes into a good pocket knife? I will say that this thing is very lightweight. I'm very surprised how lightweight it is. But I really like the texture on these scales. I do like that thumb. Ugh. There we go for the one-handed thing. But man, that is freaking really kind of binding up on me. But uh, I love how lightweight it is. You know, I like how big the handle is compared to the blade, right? The blade is only 2.75 inches, but the handle feels like it's a good bit longer than that. That may be like three inches, three and a half inches. But, you know, you're looking for a good pocket knife, a good service knife. You know, this may be a good option. So survival anytime says not for me. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. You know, like I say, and everybody's got their own little style of knives that they like. This is one that I carried around with me for a long, long time. I, 15 years look how easy that flicks open right this thing is it flicks open super super easy i like uh i like this style a lot this one man okay let me try it again ah, <laughs> ah there we go it just needs some it needs some lube it needs some lubing some some loving on it but uh i do like the scales on it all right so that is the fox knives air fox i'm gonna add this to my pocket knife collection i'm gonna lube it up Give it a little bit more love and see if I can, um, you know, see if I can turn this into my, my, my air everyday carry. I do love how lightweight this is. So this is a very lightweight pocket knife. All right, so that is the Pro Plus box. So let's move on to what you get in the Pro box. So the Pro box, you get everything in the advanced box and the basic box plus Pro box. And I'm actually super, super excited about this month's Pro box. All right, so this month in the Pro box, you get the uh, the Gravel 16.9 Ultra Pass Purifier. So this is a water purifier slash water bottle type of, uh, deal here. So it's purifier and a water bottle in the same same thing. Um, I'm super excited about this. And I'll tell you why. Because I have a lot of water filters, a lot of water purifiers. Maybe I'll grab some out of here just to kind of show you a couple of different styles. And they're, they're, people are always coming up with different unique styles of these water uh, filters. And this is a unique design to the traditional water filter. You go, uh, you may bring camping, you may put in your survival kit. And I'm actually super excited about this design. Our survival anything says pivot over tightened. Yeah, that, that could be it. The, whatever. One of these guys could just be over tightened just a little bit. Maybe we can get a, an Allen wrench and loosen that up. Oh, I'll, I'll play around with that. But so this is um, the Gravel 16.9 Ultra Pass Purifier. So am I in focus? Why am I not in focus? All right. So it says, so first off, this thing feels super high quality. Um, there's a lot of rubber grips on here. The base is rubber. Even the little logo here is rubber. This top part is rubber. I love rubber, man. It makes it feel so, like really high quality. Uh, this whole thing feels super high quality. All right. So let's take it apart. So the top here. All right. So you'd see this. It just looks like a normal water bottle. And you can actually use this as a normal water bottle. You could fill this up with water, just like that. You have a, a traditional top here. You got a carrying handle. You can attach as a carabiner to your backpack or something. You could bring this to work. It, the top unscrews. This is also rubber, which is nice. You have a big, nice little water bottle here. All right. Now, let's say you fill this up. You go hiking. You run out of water. What do you do? Well, this actually comes out. You actually have two different compartments here. And so what you do is you take this part, you fill this up with dirty water. This is your water filter. This bottom part here is the water filter. And this is kind of the water bottle. You take the dirty water, you put this in here. Now it's got a couple O-rings here so that water doesn't spill out. And as you press this down, you're forcing the water through the water filter and into this clean section here. Just like that. And then bam, you've got an entire container of clean drinking water that you can just go on your way and just start drinking. 
And what I love about this design is that the dirty water never, there's no way it can contaminate the clean water, right? These are two completely different sections here. So this is the dirty water, goes through the filter into the clean water and you're good to go. I love this design, man. I genuinely love this design. And then you're ready to drink the water. I have other ones where you have a container like this for the dirty water bottle. And when you suck the water out through a straw, you're sucking it through a filter. So it's kind of like a life straw. Those things are kind of a pain in the ass. They really are because you gotta go, you really gotta suck it through there. Um, and you know, maybe sometimes you don't, you're exhausted. You don't really want to have to do that. This, you're completely filtering the water first and you're filtering it just by you kind of pressing this down and kind of compressing these two things. Um, and then you can just drink the water from here, however you want, just like you normally do with the water bottle. And so I love this because you can you, you can fill this thing up and you can use this as your everyday carry water bottle. You never really have to use this if you don't, uh, don't want to, the filter part. You can just use this as your everyday carry. You get into a pinch, you fill this up, then you filter the water just like this, just by pressing down. I wonder, yeah, so you, there's a lot of air that's kind of getting trapped in there, but you just kind of press down like this and it pushes the water through. And now you just drink the water just like anything else. I love this design a lot, man. This is a really, 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 really slick design. And I could easily see this becoming my neck, my like regular uh, camping water bottle that I bring with me. It's because, I mean, I love the handle. I love the high quality. I love all the, the rubber that's on here. I love the two different sections that it has. Um, yeah, this thing just feels super, super high quality. Uh, and I love this design, man. So you just push push it in however you need to, and you're good to go. Let me show you a couple other water filters um, that I have. I probably have a whole bunch. Just to kind of show you some other designs that are out there. So Survival Filter is obviously a really popular brand. And let me just show you, man. It's kind of like, you, it's kind of a pain in the ass, right? You got a pre-filter and then you got your filter. You got two different hoses. One hose is for dirty water. The other one is for clean water, but you don't want to get those confused up. You don't want to like mix them up. I don't even really like it when the hoses are touching each other in this compartment. And then what, you got the other parts of the filter. You got the container for the clean water that often gets dirty on me and i gotta sit here and i gotta pump it out i gotta pump it just to fill up a cup that's not really that transportable right I, i'd have to sit there and walk around this with this cup afterwards so like th this design it, it never really was like all that effective it's not really designed you got this for cleaning it out it's not really designed for hiking and backpacking um it's good for maybe emergencies but it's not like the most convenient design right and then what else do we got? Uh, we got the Sawyer Mini. This is actually, it's kind of a cool design. I like the Sawyer Mini. Uh, so this one is effectively, where's the rest of it? I'm missing the rest of it. This one effectively, it can screw onto a water bottle. And again, you have to suck it through the water bottle to get the, um, to get it out. And I got another Survival Poker Pro. There we go. So this is the Sawyer Mini, and kind of a cool little compact design. You can screw it into a water bottle, then you gotta suck it through. You really gotta force it through. You can't just like pour it like you can with this. Not super wild about, I mean, they work. I, that's kind of my go-to one. Then you got the Life Straw, another pain in the ass design where they expect you to get down on your belly and drink water directly out of a river. Again, it's not really transportable, right? Um, so comparing all of this to this design where it's transportable, it looks just like a regular water bottle. You can use it as your regular water bottle. And I love that you're filtering the water, not by you sucking it or not by you pumping away, just by you kind of like pressing things together like that. It filters the water and you, it's transportable. It's you're good to go. You can carry this around with you um, afterwards. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. Um, so what do you guys think about this design? Would you guys use that? Um, and how do you think it compares to some of these other other water filters? Like how many of you guys ever use a light straw before? Um, they're kind of a, kind of overrated. They're good because they're cheap. They're like 20 bucks. Sometimes you can get these things for like 15 bucks. Um, and you see these in a lot of like survival kits and everything. But if you're going hiking or just an overnight camping trip, 
I feel like something like this is absolutely perfect. This really kind of blends um, a lot of the, it's, it's really is like one of the best designs out there that I've seen so far. Why I'm so excited. So comment down below if you guys would get one of these. So this is the uh, the Grail Ultra Pass Purifier. I do have a link to this down in the description below, as well as links to all the other gear that we're talking about in today's video. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm gonna add this to my collection. I'm gonna test it out. Maybe I need to do a video kind of comparing all these different water filters, but I definitely think that's a pretty cool little one that they have there. So, all right, so that is the Pro Box. Let's move on to the Advanced Box. The Advanced Box has another pretty cool item that I'm pretty excited about. So, that is this guy. So, at first, this may just look like a wet sack, right? We've all seen those if you go camping or something. Um, you go camping or you're building a bug out bag and essentially they're waterproof bags that, um, you kind of do one of these numbers and what do you do? You fold it up a couple times like that and then you clip these together and just that action, just by you folding it up and clipping it together has made this waterproof, right? You can submerge this underwater. And just by doing these simple little folds like that is going to keep everything in here dry. So if you're going kayaking or boating or you're it's um, you're just even you're going camping and it's raining out or something, it's a lot of situations that uh, you want a dry sack like that. But this is not just a dry sack. This is also a Faraday cage, a Faraday bag. Fer <laughs> They're calling it a Faraday dry bag. And this is the SLNT Faraday Dry Bag. All right, so what is a Faraday bag, I guess? Well, you, we've seen those before. And what they do is that they stop the um, stop radio signals and Wi-Fi signals and all these other uh, signals like that from entering in here. And so that's really two, two, two-fold purposes. One, if there is an electromagnetic pulse, for example, um, an EMP, which could happen from solar flares coming from the, the sun, which happens quite often actually, but also if there's a nuclear bomb that detonates, there'll be a large EMP that emits from that. And it they will fry all electronics, your TV, your phone, your car, electronics, everything will get fried. If you have an item in a Faraday cage, it will stop that from getting fried. It, this will prevent it. The, um, the electrical or the radio waves or whatever will hit the metal mesh around the bag and not penetrate the bag. So it's good for that. It's good for protecting some of your gear. Um, if you have electronics in your emergency kit, yeah, it's not a bad idea to keep them in a Faraday cage. But another benefit is that it stops all signals. So let's say you don't want somebody tracking your cell phone. You don't want the Fed knowing where your cell phone is, or you don't want your cell phone going off or something. You can put it in this and people can't track you. They, they, it's not emitting or receiving any RF signals. So Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, none of that stuff works on any gear in here. And so if you're you're trying to go off grid, you don't want people knowing where you're at, something like that, you can stick it in here. And so it's got two different purposes, right? It's a dry sack or a dry bag, but it's also a Faraday cage. So something like this, you know, it's it's kind of cool, right? It's kind of kind of interesting. I like that uh, I like that design. The survival prepper says grail is good i use msr though okay msr um talking about the water filter and so yeah this is pretty cool man this is kind of a neat little thing so first off i always like dry bags like this um i have several of these that i bring camping with me and i've never had one that has uh you know EMP resistance and gps and tracking resistance never had one that has a faraday cage uh, built right into it Pretty cool, man. And it's got a couple straps that I can attach to it as well. Let me attach these before I lose this strap like that. Um, I like it, man. I like it. I think it's pretty neat. It's kind of a specific thing. Maybe not everybody would really get it. But um, if you want to completely go off grid and not allow anybody to track where you're at, or you want to protect your electronics in case of a EMP, solar flare, anything like that, this would definitely be a good option. But this would be good for your bug out bag. That's what this would be good for. A uh, good addition to your bug out bag. All right, so that is in the advanced box. So now let's move on to the pro box. Um, and once again, if you guys are interested in battle box, I do have an affiliate link down in the description below. You get a little bonus if you use my link, I get a little bonus. So feel free to check that out. I have a link in the, down below as well as links to all these, uh, the gear I'm talking about in this video. So in the basic box, you get three items uh, this month. 
The first one is going to be the Gear Aid Extra Heavy Duty 1100 Paracord. That's this guy right here. So we've all heard of 550 Paracord, right? Supposedly it can hold 550 pounds. This is twice as strong. This is Paracord, just like 550 cord, but it's twice as strong. Literally twice as thick, twice as strong, twice as many strands. Um, and so like Paracord... I think, it, I think paracord gets overused in, in this field. Honestly, I think people obsess about it too much. Paracord's not that great. Paracord's really not that strong. One thing that's really annoying with paracord is if you take it, you can really stretch it out lengthwise. It's very easy to stretch paracord out. And so there's a lot of things that it's just not good for. Like you'd never want to hang up a hammock using paracord. You do that and you're gonna wake up with your hammock on the ground. Um, and if you're, let's say you're messing around with like a, a boat or something, you don't really want to use paracord either. It's just not strong enough. Um, if you're tying down even tarps or something, there's a lot of situations where paracord is just kind of like cheap, inexpensive um, cordage, but you need something stronger. And that's where this comes in. This is uh, 1100 paracord and it's reflective. It's got these little reflective strips built into it. So again, for boating, I, I could really see this being really valuable. Uh, so it says here, a reflective 100% nylon paracord for camping and survival. Secure a shelter or hang clotheslines at 5.5 millimeters. This utility line offers secure strength and 16 inner strands can unravel for use as fishing line or threads. 16 inner strands there. So yeah, dude, I, I love this idea of using 1100 paracord rather than 550 paracord. And you got a nice little carabiner that comes with it. Um, as well, and the reflective properties, you know, that can be uh, helpful in a lot of situations as well. So I love this, guys. If you're looking to build a bug out bag and you really want it to be like premium stuff, get some of this stuff here. Gear Aid Extra Heavy Duty 1100 Paracord. All right, so the next item is by My Medic, and this is the My Medic Super Bivy. So we've been seeing a lot of My Medic stuff um, from BattleBox the last few months, and you know, they're really like um, simplifying and kind of glorifying a lot of these less glamorous aspects of survival when it comes to um, tourniquets and first aid kits and all this stuff. And I really love that they're, they're doing that and they're really simplifying it. And so now they've created a bivy bag as well. So uh, a bivy bag, it's essentially, it's just a, it's a bag. It's just a bag that you can put around yourself and act sort of as a shelter system. Like your sleeping bag is part of your shelter system. A lot of sleeping bags are very susceptible to getting wet or damaged. A bivy bag, um, you can actually use this with your sleeping bag and helps insulate you, keep a lot of that, that heat close to you. Um, and this one here is using a lot of mylar or made out of mylar. So it's very reflective, right? And, and it's this large, large bag that can fully encompass your body. It's essentially like a sleeping bag, except there's no matting or anything. And it's all mylar and something like this will help you stay warm. And so my medic is using it because again, if somebody's suffering from hypothermia or you know some kind of medical condition, this will keep them warm. This can be their shelter system, and it's super thin. You can see that, but that's fine. That that that'll be enough um, because of this mylar material to reflect their heat back in on them and keep them warm in these emergency situations, in life or death situations. So yeah, I really like um, baby bags. I, yeah, if you're going camping, um, yeah, add a bit. Get a baby bag, add it to your, your shelter system. And another thing I really like about this is a lot of times you get something like this and um, you roll it up, you can never get it back in this freaking bag ever, man. You, you, it's, it's kind of a one-time use. So they've given us kind of an oversized bag. So the bag for the baby bag is larger than it actually needs to be. It's almost twice the size and that's fine. I love it because you can still compact it like that. So it's still only taking up as much space as you need. But you can reuse this bivy bag. You can put it right back in the sack. And uh, yeah, I love how compact it is. I love how lightweight it is. Uh, you can definitely add this to your first aid kit. If you want this to be part of your first aid kit, you can add a bivy bag like this to it. Or you just add it to your 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 um, your bug out bag. Go bring it camping with you. You know, and, you know, if, if it just gets a little bit colder than you're expecting, throw the bivy bag around your, your sleeping bag and you'll be good to go. So I like that a lot. And all right, so we got one last item in the battle box, um, basic box, and that is the Insight Edition Total Knife Manual. So um, I'm really excited about this. This is by Field and Stream. And you know, knowledge is power, man. 
And I, I was looking through this, and I actually really, really am impressed with this this book. Um, I, I love books that have really clean, crisp like illustrations and images and guides like this. And this definitely seems like a very, very helpful um, book. I, I like illustrations. You can call me dumb if you want, but I like pictures and guides. They gave us a book one time like um, Bushcraft Essentials or something, and it's nothing but text. There's like no images at all. And it's just so hard to get some of those concepts. So this one has plenty, plenty of images and illustrated guides. And it shows you all these techniques. So here we go, how to sharpen your knife um, on the back of a, a, a coffee cup. I actually have a video on how to do that. And is this a complete guide, man, on how to maintain your knife, proper cutting um, techniques, how to you know lube up your knife, how to sharpen your knife, the different elements of knives, different purposes of knives, different style of knives. I, I love all of this stuff, man. So if you really want to kind of up your game, get a book just like this, a Total Knife Manual by um, Field and Stream. It's definitely a very high quality book. And something like this, man, this is, I, I'd almost rather you guys investing in knowledge and education like this, rather than investing in gear. Like investing in gear has a, a point of diminishing returns where you can throw more money and more money and more money at more gear, but you don't know how to actually use it. Like, you know, it's not really doing you much good, man. You need that knowledge. You need that balance of knowledge and education experience and gear so it's not just um just getting the gear and there's somebody out there that could have you know a, a 30 dollar knife and do far better in a survival situation than somebody with the 150 dollar knife who doesn't know how to use it but let that sink in i'd rather you buy a cheaper knife and this book than buy a more expensive knife and not really know how to use it all right so inside edition field of stream the uh total knife manual so that is it guys that is all the gear that we have in this month's basic box i'm really excited about this i'm really excited about this book i love books like that um i like the bivy bag i'm gonna be adding that to my bug out bag i might be bringing that with me camping i really like that water filter um that i'm definitely absolutely going to be using that water filter i love that design to it um i love the, how high quality it is i love all the rubber to it um and i i mean i can just use this as my everyday carry like it, you can drink out of it it doesn't have to go through the filter Right, so you could use this and just fill this up with water every day. So yeah, I am very, very impressed with this guy here. Links down in the description if you want to check out. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in, joining in with me, and I will see you guys next month for the uh, the next battle box. All right, adios.